Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.5 beta three released to developers and soon to public beta testers. This should release within a day or so, or maybe by the time you're watching this video. And this particular update came in at 619.7 megabytes. That's on the iPhone 14 pro max and was about the same size on the other devices here around five to 600 megabytes or so along with iOS 16.5 developer beta three, Apple also released iPad OS 16.5 beta three, watch OS 9.5 beta three, Mac OS 13.4 beta three, as well as TV OS and HomePod OS 16.5 beta three. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, and you can see the build number is 20F 5050F. And this particular update cannot be installed without having a developer account or public beta tester account. The beta profile doesn't seem to work properly. However, some are still getting the update, but either way, make sure you're signed up as a developer or a public beta tester. Now this particular update does have a modem update, at least on the 14 pro and 14 pro max. We went from version 1.70.01 to 1.70.02. What that actually will help with hopefully has to do with overall modem and connectivity, but we'll have to wait and see if anything changes. I've had some odd issues using beta two. Now, as far as new features, well, some are saying there's changes to the always on display wording changes. Now I actually have beta two here and I didn't notice this difference, but if you go into settings and then you go down to display and brightness, then go down to always on display. You can see here on the left is beta two on the right is beta three. Some are seeing basically a change here. I'm not actually seeing that change at all. Also, some people are seeing Apple pay later. So if you go into the wallet, some are actually seeing that. And while I do have daily cash and the savings account, I'm not seeing Apple pay later. However, some people are actually seeing it as it's rolling out slowly. Now this past week, we had a new feature as far as HomePod is concerned, where you can now use sound detection that will allow you to detect both activated smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors. I showed this in a separate video. It's found within the home app, go under your settings here, then go into your home settings, and then you'll have safety and security under safety and security. You can turn sound recognition on if you want to, then you'll have different family members here and more. So if you want to use that feature, it's really nice. It recognizes that sound as far as additional features in this update, there isn't a whole lot to talk about other than what's in the code and bug fixes. Now, as far as what's in the code, we have emergency SOS changes, and it specifically has to do with finding locations of satellites. So if we go back, if we try the demo about satellite connection and we go through this, what it's going to do is actually try and find a satellite and I'm inside. So it probably won't be able to find it, but it will find a satellite and then actually let you know when the next one should be coming by. So you can point your phone and place that emergency call. So there's some information in the code about that. I'm not able to actually test that out. However, you'll see it's seeing a satellite here as I rotate this. However, I don't think it will connect but we'll give it just a second, see if it connects here. And now it's actually showing where the satellite is. It's working as it should. However, it should tell us when the next one is actually here. So this is just an example, a demo that you can try out yourself if you have an iPhone 14 device, but it should tell you when the next one will be coming by and you'll see it says turn right to connect and keep pointing within settings under accessibility. They've changed some wording under voiceover and possibly added an option. However, I was not able to find that based on the code there could be some new options coming to voiceover. And additionally, there's some changes to wording throughout. So it has to do with sports and things like that. And the news app, and this particular update only has four different updates that we're aware of so far with 16.5. Basically we can turn on and off screen recording using Siri. The news app has this new sports section. There's no more beta profile. And if there is one, you install it, it will auto delete. You also have the ability to install updates when your battery is below 50% and not plugged in. So it's a pretty sparse update. We're still waiting for updated next gen CarPlay, a heavily updated accessibility mode, as well as iMessage contact key verification. There are some bugs that have been fixed in this, and I think most of the features are going to be left for iOS 17. And we have some more news about that. I'll talk about in a moment, but as far as things they've fixed, well, the duplicate wallpaper bug seems to be fixed. So if we go into that and we go and add a wallpaper now within wallpaper, if we scroll down it, you can see under collections, there's no longer duplicates before there were duplicate wallpaper sections that looked exactly the same. That seems to be resolved in beta three, but there are bugs with notifications and more. So if we 
we go to my lock screen notifications and I scroll down, swipe back up, it seems okay there, but then it overlays itself and then jumps back into place. It's not smooth and has some graphical glitches there. Additionally, there's issues within the health app for me. I added some medication just to test this out. And if I tap on one, you'll see, I have Tylenol listed here, tap on it. It crashes the app every time. If I go back in medications, I can't swipe on them, tap on them or anything. It just completely crashes every single time. So I haven't been able to get that fixed, but I did report it in the feedback app. So make sure you do the same thing. As far as release notes, let's go into that and you'll see here for beta three release notes are pretty much the same as they were last time with beta two. We have one new feature, which is the same. It says a shared administrator and a home is now able to pair and add matter accessories. Then they've fixed some issues to do with overall home kit or matter and more. So you'll see here when a manual software update is attempted on a matter accessory with an available update, home might not indicate that the update has been requested and continue to indicate an update is available. So they've fixed some of those issues, nothing major here this time around. Now, I think we're not seeing a lot of updates in iOS 16.5 because Apple's working on iOS 17. They're saving features for that. Just today, we've heard from Mark Gurman that he believes the health app will be coming to iPad with some updates as well to things like mood and different enhancements where you can put in more information. Also, we're hearing more information about the app library, having better sort options, or maybe being able to reorganize them. And then also music is getting less text and more graphics. And additionally, you'll be able to put lyrics on the lock screen according to those leaks. So we could see some things like that, more lock screen customization, even flashlight brightness, where we can adjust that a little bit more instead of just pressing and having different levels five different levels here, we would be able to have a smooth interval interval here instead of just jumps to different levels. So that's something we could see with iOS 17. Now, as far as iOS 16.5 beta three's battery life, well, that will take a few days to measure, but we can take a look at battery health. Since I installed this, I'm at 97% and my battery life has been okay. Over the past few days, I've been adjusting things with notifications here to try and make it a little bit better. You'll see today I have four hours and 24 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 55 minutes of screen idle time. And I'm at about 50% usage. I'm down to 45% battery. Overcast, which is a podcasting app, did make the phone quite hot earlier before this beta was installed. I rebooted it, it fixed the problem. But overall, it seems to be doing pretty well on battery life. It will take a few days to know, and of course, I'll let you know in the weekend follow up video as well. As far as overall performance, performance seems to be pretty good. Scrolling through things you've seen has been pretty good, no, no issues. Promotion's nice and smooth. It's ramping up and down as expected. And just overall performance seems to be pretty good. The same is true on iPhone 11, where we have a little bit older device. Let's load music for the first time. It's loading off Wi-Fi. Scrolling is smooth just to begin with and going into different apps should be nice and fast. We'll go into home. We had a splash screen there. And in general, it seems to be acting as you would expect. As far as the overall heat of the device, it's been nice and cool. Other than that issue with overcast earlier, it's been nice and cool. Nothing to be concerned about cool to the touch, but if it's really processing something intensely, maybe you're recording 4k 60 video, it can warm up and that's normal. Now, as far as Apple fixing anything to do with the camera, they haven't mentioned anything as far as that goes. And we'll check that in more depth this weekend in the follow-up. As far as if you should install iOS 16.5 beta three at this point, I would say probably not wait until beta four or the release candidate and just continue using iOS 16.4.1. As far as when to expect iOS 16.5 beta four or iOS 16.5 RC, I would say typically after beta three, we move to a weekly schedule. We don't know that for sure, but next Tuesday would be likely with possibly a release candidate later that week with a final release, the second or third week of May, depending on how many betas Apple wants. Since there's not a ton of features in this update, it makes sense that they would just push this out more rapidly. Also, we're waiting for iOS 16.6 as we're seeing that in the code of different websites. Sites. So the website analytics are showing that it's in use. And of course we'll have those versions until September, until we have iOS 17 released to the public. So mid September or early September, we should see that, but in just a month or so away at this point, we should see iOS 17 beta one on June 5th at WWDC. So hopefully we get some great features and hopefully stability. Now, as far as overall benchmarks, I did run those so we could take a look. Let's go into Geekbench six 
And you'll see here, I scored 2,525 for single core, 6,253 for multi-core. Let's compare that with beta two. And so beta two had 2,522 compared to 2,525 and then 6,308 compared to 6,253. At this point, I would expect them to be very similar. Sometimes it will go up or down depending on when you run it, but it's close enough now that I wouldn't really expect any changes. So it seems to be pretty stable overall and no issues. But of course I'll report back with more features and anything else I find in a different video. And if you find anything, let me know in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it will be linked in the description as it always is. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. Thanks for making it until the end of the video. I really appreciate you watching. Would you like to see these videos shorter? Do you like the amount of information that's in them? And do you like me changing up the music? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I really appreciate you watching. Let me know anything else you found as well. I'll see you next time.